My favorite college football projections are out for 2024, and Missouri is one of nine teams in the top 15 from the SEC. So let's talk about all the ramifications of that and some surprises on the Mizzou schedule coming up right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball and on today's program not only are we going to talk about the s p plus projections here before college football we're going to talk about apparently kirby moore was a candidate at alabama for their offensive coordinator position or so the germans would have us believe so we got to talk about all that plus texas as usual shooting off at the mouth this early in the sec process but you know what before we start the program i do want to remind you that this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today and you'll get $150 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And as I said, S&P Plus, our old friend Bill C, as he was known back in the Rock M Nations Day. Well, now Bill Conley, an ESPN staff writer over at ESPN.com. In my humble opinion, he's got the, the best college football projections out there. I've followed him from all the way at his days over at the now defunct Football Outsiders site. And, well, these projections for 2024, Missouri coming in at number 11 currently. So yes, that would put Missouri in the college football playoff coming in right behind number 10 LSU in what many people are calling a lateral ranking. Okay. Sorry. I just couldn't help myself, but seriously, folks, just a lot of great information within these projections as usual. So obviously these are not the gospel. Missouri outperformed its projections quite a bit last season, to say the least. And we'll get to why I think that happened here in just a little bit. But pretty impressive to see in this top 15 of the S&P Plus. Of course, Bill Conley rated every single team in FCS football, including, yes, the newly minted Kennesaw State for the 2024 season. But nine teams from the SEC, including, of course, Texas and Oklahoma for 2024, nine of the top 15 from the SEC, including Mizzou opponents, Alabama, Texas A&M, and Oklahoma. So only three of the possible eight there in the top 15 are Missouri opponents. That's one reason why Missouri's schedule is relatively favorable, no question about it. But I bet a lot of fans are somewhat surprised to see Texas A&M at 13th in the projections. Now, Let's explain how these projections actually work here because the big three factors in order of most important to least important, well, number one, your returning production has a tremendous amount to do with your projections in S&P in S Plus. Secondly, your, your recent recruiting rankings are a big factor. And finally, just your recent history of wins and losses. So when you actually look at the 2023 preseason projections, well, Missouri was 35th and ultimately ended up finishing in 10th in the rankings in 2023. So how are they able to overcome those projections, to outpace those projections. Well, basically the Missouri offense was much better than anyone expected. In the preseason, the Missouri offense was ranked 52nd, well they finished 13th, whereas the Missouri defense was slightly better than projected, 19th in the preseason, finished 14th, 
But it was really all the Missouri offense. And if you think about it, again, returning production, your number one factor, well, quite simply, Brady Cook, your starting quarterback, your number one running back, Cody Schrader, and your number one receiver, Luther Burden, were all just simply far more productive players in 2023. Luther Burden, his returning production was not particularly impressive in 2022, but obviously last season, Burden was one of the most productive players in the entire country. So you look at Missouri's projections right now, break it down into offense versus defense, and for this coming season, the projections are the eighth best offense in the country and the 24th best defense. I actually think those projections are right about where I have had would I have ha- where I would have had Missouri as well. The eighth best offense, I th- again, with Brady Cook coming back another year, one of the more productive players at quarterback last season, another year of experience makes all the sense in the world, especially with Theo Weiss and Burden and Mookie Cooper and yes, Marquis Speedy Johnson coming back as well. The Missouri is projected to be just inside of the college football playoff here. But again, I think a lot of people, as I was trying to get into earlier and then kind of abandon ship there, Texas A&M at number 13, a lot of that is definitely recruiting rankings. And I do think that with a new coach, with Mike Elko, I think the Aggies could potentially be poised to have a better year than what a lot of fans are expecting. I was the opposite last season. I went against the projections last year just because I felt like, you know what, this Jimbo Fisher thing, it seems to have run its course, and certainly it did by the end of the year. But this season, I actually feel like the Aggies are probably, it's probably the second toughest game. It almost has to be the second toughest game on the Missouri schedule, where I think when the schedule first came out, I think a lot of Missouri fans would have assumed that the Oklahoma Sooners were the second the toughest game. But to me, home versus away, I think that's enough to push it toward the Aggies. Now, while those top three games at Alabama, at College Station, and against Oklahoma at home are three really tough games, no doubt about it, well, the rest of Missouri's schedule gets quite a bit easier after that. Missouri's fourth toughest opponent, according to S&P Plus, is number 31, Auburn at home followed by number 42, South Carolina, number 56, Arkansas, that is maybe a little bit higher than I would have expected. But then on the other end of the spectrum, you have Mississippi State at number 74. Now, that's a a low projection there for Mississippi State. To give you an idea, Missouri's other one of Missouri's other opponents, Boston College, is ranked 76th in the projection. So I thought Mississippi State would be projected to be a more difficult game than that, but I think we're going to have to throw that one in there with Arkansas and, and Boston College, South Carolina, Auburn with games that certainly you really want to win and, and no doubt really right there with Boston College in a game that you have to win. And then the rest of Missouri's schedule, of course, three teams in the hundreds, Vanderbilt, UMass, and Buffalo. And by the way, Murray State did not receive a vote in the final 2023 FCS coaches poll. So four automatic victories there, you can almost assume. And according to a lot of reporting out there, Alabama is going to promote from within for their next offensive coordinator. So apparently this is good news for Missouri in terms of Kellen Moore and their offensive line coach, Brandon Jones, as well. So let's talk about that here coming up in just a little bit. But first, let's talk about FanDuel. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 bucks if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and more. And you know what? I just want to talk a little bit about college basketball for just a moment. To me, if I'm going to take any future team to win the title, I think maybe this really is Houston's year, their first year in the Big 12. Normally, I like to fade Houston 
But defensively, not only are, are they really good as always, they are by far and away statistically the best defensive team in the country. You know what? That tends to play in March. So give me the Cougars to win the whole thing at nine to one. But regardless, you got to visit fanduel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. It's FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. It's Locked On Sports Today, here for you covering sports 24-7. 24-7. Again, find Locked On Sports today on the free Fire TV channels app. So there's a fair bit of national speculation, rumor and innuendo, all that good stuff about Missouri's Kirby Moore, their offensive coordinator, possibly being a candidate at Alabama. Of course, their new head coach, Kalen DeBoer, there was apparently some connection, I believe going back to their Boise State days there, but ultimately it sounds like DeBoer is going to promote from within, according to many sources, including On3 and 24-7 Sports, going to promote a tight ends coach Nick Sheridan to be their offensive coordinator. Of course, not to be confused with Nicolette Sheridan, but no, Nick Sheridan apparently going to be the new offensive coordinator for Alabama. And you know what? I've done the lateral move joke just about enough here lately, so I'm not going to do it here with Kirby Moore potentially going to Alabama. And obviously, in a vacuum, the Alabama offensive coordinator job is more attractive than the Missouri offensive coordinator job. But of course, nothing happens in a vacuum, and that's why context is king. And I have no idea how serious any of this really was, if if Moore and Alabama indeed were in contact, if there was any type of back and forth or just a gauging of interest, whatever it might be. My speculation, and it is purely just speculation, if you're Kirby Moore, I think there is some good reasons to maybe hesitate in taking that particular job. Number one, Kalen DeBoer is thought of as an excellent offensive play caller already. I believe he was the lead play caller at Washington. Now, apparently, he's maybe deciding to take a step back from that. We shall see, because this strikes me a little bit As somebody who's a Kansas City Chiefs fan, for years and years and years, obviously, Eric Bieniemy was the offensive coordinator on one of the best offenses, not only in the league, but in league history, a mentor for one of the great players in league history and Patrick Mahomes. And yet, to me, the shadow of Andy Reid always hurt Eric Bieniemy to me more than any other factor in him getting promoted to another head to another another job a head coaching position obviously is what Eric Bieniemy was wanting to get at a certain point who knows if that's ever going to happen now to me Andy Reid and his rather large figurative shadow I think that's what hurt him more than anything and I think if you're Kirby Moore I think there is a bit of a risk there if hypothetically if he were to go to Alabama that even if he did a great job down there well it's possible he wouldn't get as much credit as he would get at Missouri, where everybody essentially knows that he's the full-time play caller at this point. Ultimately, what went on behind the scenes, if anything, between Kirby Moore and Alabama, well, I'm probably never going to have any idea on that. But here's what I do know. The fact that Kirby Moore is sticking around, and also Brandon Jones, who, again, a lot of rumor and innuendo that Alabama was potentially interested in Missouri's offensive line coach as well. Obviously losing one or either of those guys at this point in the process here in mid-February would have been a real blow to Missouri next season, who again is projected to be a top 10 offense next year, even without the great Cody Schrader. So again, Thank goodness Kirby Moore and Brandon Jones seem to be sticking around because, as I've said before, maybe even especially in Brandon Jones' case, because finding a really good offensive line coach, that's basically worth its weight in gold. 
And with spring football practice, believe it or not, just around the corner here, I had some people wondering, hey, are there any early enrollees for the football squad this spring from this past high school recruiting class? And as far as I can tell, there are definitely a few. And speaking of offensive linemen, well, Brandon Jones is getting a lot of his young men on campus early, including Ryan Justice, Javen Richardson. Caleb Pyfrom and Talon Chandler all apparently going to be on campus early, as well as Aiden Glover, by the way, the Missouri quarterback, the future Missouri quarterback here. Brian Smith, my frequent guest on this program, Locked On's chief recruiting expert, as I like to call him. Well, he said Glover is more of a more of a, a developmental prospect than, say, a guy who came onto campus immediately like Chase Daniel and was ready to be the backup quarterback at Missouri. Now, there's some speculation. Hey, is Sam Horn going to be ready for the fall, obviously? So that means Missouri likely will go into the portal. But at the very least, Missouri will be able to get a look at Aiden Glover, see what he can see. Maybe he's a bit of a faster learner than we're expecting right now. Point is, give him maybe a 1% chance, 2% chance now to be the Missouri backup this fall because if he weren't here early, I would say, hey, he shows up for fall camp. There's a 0% chance he could be your backup straight from high school at that point. But also on the defensive side of the ball, linebacker Brian Huff and also cornerback Cameron Keys expected to be early arrivers on campus as well. Brian Smith I just mentioned him. Well, he brought up Cameron Keys, the corner, as somebody to watch for Missouri, an underrated prospect, in his opinion, for sure. And you know what's not underrated is people at the University of Texas and how much they love the sound of their own voice. So let's talk about the Longhorns and how they're just, they got to be out in front of everything, including the nine-game SEC schedule. So let's talk about that here in just a little bit. But first, I want to tell you that game time is truly the best and easiest place to get last-minute ticket ideas. There, there really is no doubt about it whatsoever. And if you want to go to the Missouri-Tennessee basketball game this coming Tuesday, well, plenty, plenty of great deals, as you might have expected. You want to check out Dalton Necht and Rick Barnes and the Tennessee Volunteers. Well, now's your chance, and if you've waited until the last second, there's no doubt that game time is the best place to go for it, and with zone deals, you pick the section and game time picks the seats for big time savings. All you got to do is go download the game time app and terms do apply by the way, but download the game time app, use promo code L O C K E D O N for $20 off your first purchase. Download the game time app, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So Chris Del Conte is the university of Texas athletic director and apparently the Longhorns have a bit of an annual state of the program that type of deal that type of event and when speaking at this event well Del Conte said talking about the eight game nine game schedule potentially in the SEC he said we have eight games scheduled right now well thanks for that brilliant insight but he says we're working on going to a nine game schedule but we have a ways to go with that. I would say this year, we have an eight-game schedule. The following year, we have another eight-game schedule. Then we'll look at going into a nine-game conference schedule. You know, I do just love how Texas is already blabbering on at the mouth in public about something that's important, by the way, a, a negotiation that should probably stay private at this point between the SEC and Disney slash ESPN. I don't know, possibly poisoning the well a little bit by speaking out like, oh, we're probably going to do this th this year and not that in, in 2025 and 26. Hey, we'll go to nine then maybe. Why are you saying any of this stuff publicly? 
honestly, hey, you guys haven't even played an SEC football game yet. Maybe go sit in the corner for a little bit and take notes. I know you guys like to blame Missouri and its athletic department for what happened to the Big 12 back in the day, but it turns out, oh wait, you guys were much more the problem. Missouri was, of course, right to leave for the SEC, which was proven by the fact that Oklahoma and Texas are following, yes, following Missouri and Texas A&M into the Southeastern Conference. I know a lot of you Texas and Oklahoma fans are going to be upset at me for pointing out obvious facts, but that is what it is. I'm sorry. To me, just for the Texas athletic director to be going out there and talking about, well, here's what I think is going to happen with the nine-game schedule. Listen, I understand that people in Texas, especially at the University of Texas, thinks that particular program is the most important thing on earth. And I realize that you guys are a little bit upset that the Longhorn Network was maybe not as fruitful as you thought it would. But maybe take the arrogance down just a tiny notch for me. Can we please? Can you guys please? Again, you're the new kids on the block. It's your first day in the job. Go to the conference room, take your initiations, and just shut up. That's all I want to hear from Texas for a couple years. Just shut up and take your money and be lucky that you're here. Nobody wants to hear your, your opinions anymore. You're one of 16 opinions, just like Missouri is, just like Vanderbilt is. You're no longer the bullies that get to dictate terms on everything. So go into the corner and be freaking quiet. And by the way, far be it from me to spend a ton of time defending former Missouri defensive coordinator Steve Wilkes, but I did have somebody take me to task online saying that, hey, what are you talking about? Nobody wanted Steve Wilkes to come back at the end of 2021. I, to me, that's just over-the-top hyperbole there to say nobody wanted him back. I just think that's a maybe a bit of a misremembering of the situation. I think most Missouri fans, when Wilkes decided to go back to the NFL, I think there was a bit of disappointment. Not by everybody, of course. There's never a, a total consensus. But regardless, well, Steve Wilkes has been fired once again this time by the San Francisco 49ers, a bit of a bit of a surprising move, I felt. And, you know, I, I, there was definitely a moment where Kyle Shanahan in overtime called a timeout because he was clearly frustrated with the defensive call, did not like what, what the Niners were putting out there in terms of, at the very least, the pre-snap look there. And, and Sh Shanahan was visibly annoyed, no doubt about it. But still, to, to fire him there... I thought that was interesting, and also I did notice Nick Bosa, the 49ers defensive end there, said, well, on that fourth and one, critical fourth and one play there when the Chiefs converted with a Patrick Mahomes rush, Bosa, well, he came down real hard on the running back, and he said after the game, basically this was a critique of Steve Wilkes, it, was, it would seem that, hey, we were not prepared for the read option. And I'm sorry, if that's supposed to be a criticism of Steve Wilkes, I just think that one's completely and totally unfounded because, number one, Nick Bosa's been in the NFL for a few years now. This is not the first time he's ever seen a read option in his entire life. And number two, you weren't prepared for the read option. I'll just tell you as a Kansas City Chiefs fan, that was the first read option keep that I've seen Patrick Mahomes do the entire season. And I thought it was a great call, by the way. And in my head, I even thought, you know what, have Pat just pull it and keep it on the outside. They'll never see it coming because that's something that, again, the Chiefs had not run all season. They didn't put it on tape through the entire 17 regular season games, preseason, or the previous three playoff games either. So to me, that's just frustration after a loss to be like, oh, we weren't prepared for the read option. That's sort of like saying that, oh, well, you know, you weren't prepared for the Statue of Liberty play or something like that if you were Oklahoma against Boise State all those years ago. Yeah, no kidding. Why would you spend practice time on that particular play when it's literally never been run? So anyway, 
I just wanted to go out on that particular note and thank you. Uh, thank you all as always for listening to locked on Mizzou and until next time I am John Miller and this has been locked on Mizzou.